Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about introduction, function, and classification of carbohydrates. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So carbohydrates are most abundant organic molecules in nature. It has main three elements carbon hydrogen and oxygen it has various functions like carbohydrate is the dietary source of energy we take carbohydrate as our food and it gives us energy it is the precursor of many organic compounds like from carbohydrates, fats and amino acids are generated. It forms cell membrane or you can say plasma membrane. Because in plasma membrane along with lipids, we have glycoproteins and glycolipids. So this glyco stands for carbohydrate. That means carbohydrates are present in cell membrane it is the structural component of different materials like the cell wall of plant contains cellulose and cellulose is a type of carbohydrate bacterial cell wall contains peptido glycan and peptidoglycan is made up of carbohydrate and protein exoskeleton of insects are also made up of carbohydrate that is chitin carbohydrate is the storage form of energy because in our body, we store carbohydrate in the form of glycogen so that in future, if we starve, then we can get our energy from that glycogen. Let's talk about the classification of carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are mainly of three types, monosaccharide, oligosaccharide and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides and oligosaccharides are sweet in taste. They are soluble in water and since they are sweet in taste, they are commonly known as sugar. But polysaccharides are tasteless and they are insoluble in water. In Greek, Saccharin means sugar. Hence, carbohydrates are also called saccharides. Let's talk about monosaccharides first. So in Greek, mono means one. And it cannot be further hydrolyzed. That means, in presence of water the monosaccharides will not be broken down further based on number of carbon atoms monosaccharides are of different types they are trios where only three carbons are present they are tetros where four carbon atoms are present they are pentose where five carbon atoms are present they are hexose where 6 carbon atoms are present. They are heptose where 7 carbon atoms are present. Now based on functional group, monosaccharides are of two types. First is aldose. From the name itself, you can understand in aldose, the functional group is aldehyde because the aldehyde is CHO and hence the name aldose. 
another type of carbohydrate is present that is ketose. Here the functional group is ketone, CO. Now here we can see a list. So when it is triose, the altos would be named glyceraldehyde, the ketose would be named dihydroxyacetone. That means in glyceraldehyde, you have the functional group CHO and it has three carbons. In dihydroxyacetone, the functional group is CO and it has three carbons. Like that, in tetros, the aldose would be named erythrose and the ketose would be named erythrulose. When it is pentose, the aldose would be named ribose and the ketose would be named ribulose. When it is hexose, the aldose would be named glucose, the ketose would be named fructose. And when it is heptose, the aldose would be named glucoheptose and the ketose would be named sedoheptulose. So like that. Next is oligosaccharides. So in Greek, oligo means few. Why it is named so? Because oligosaccharides contain 2 to 10 monosaccharide molecules which are liberated on hydrolysis. That means suppose here we have 4 monosaccharide molecules in this oligosaccharide. Now you apply water and it will break down this oligosaccharide and four individual monosaccharides will be generated. Based on the number of monosaccharide units present, the oligosaccharides are further subdivided to disaccharides, trisaccharides, etc. That means in the oligosaccharide, if two monosaccharide units are present, it would be named disaccharide. If three monosaccharides are present, it would be named trisaccharides, like that. Let's talk about polysaccharide. So in Greek, poly means many. It is polymers of monosaccharide units which are liberated on hydrolysis. Suppose a polysaccharide contains 15 such monosaccharides. I don't know how many of them are here. Now you apply water, so it will break down the polysaccharide and all the monosaccharide units will be liberated in this way. And there are mainly two types of polysaccharides, homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide. Homo means all the monosaccharides are same. Hetero means monosaccharide units are different. Just an example I can give you. In homopolysaccharide you can find 5 to 10 to 15 or many glucose units only. In heteropolysaccharides, you can get glucose, you can get fructose, etc. I hope you understood my lecture.